So, welcome back. It's time for part two of the Queen Bee Pro CNC router build. And since we ended on a bit of a cliffhanger last time, I just want to point out that I did find my Allen key. It took quite a bit of searching, but here it is. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, the post office finally managed to deliver the, uh, the electrical cabinets. Or to be more precise, the IKEA Lixhall cabinets that I'm going to use as electrical cabinets. These are small, fairly cheap, and made from sheet metal, so they should work just fine. And the reason I chose IKEA over a real electrical cabinet like a Rittal or an Eldon is that they would cost, for me, since I can get some quite good deals through my work, around six times as much, which would make the total come into around 25% of the cost of the entire build, which I think is a bit overkill for a hobby CNC router, but that's just me. If I could get a hold of them cheaper, real electrical cabinets I mean, I definitely would have chosen that, but here we are, and these should work just fine. So I got two of them, one of them would be for the electrical cabinet, and the second one would be for just general tool storage. Uh, and that also means I have some extra space if I want to put in a frequency converter or something similar at a later date. Uh, so anyway, the next step is to assemble the Y-axis lead screws, and after that it's time for the X-axis gantry assembly. And that's coming now. So, I'm not sure exactly how much of that you saw, because unfortunately my camera ran out of battery. Uh, but so far I've installed the X-axis on the Y gantry. And I've also installed the X-axis brace, which I'm sorry to say wasn't properly included in the instructions. Which means that I actually have to look forward several pages and see how many of these T-nuts for the 90 degree angle brackets I needed. And unfortunately I managed to scratch the anodization there. But that's how far I've gotten, and the next step is the uh, X-axis lead screw. So as it sits right now, the mechanical assembly is, I'd say, around 90% complete. 
There are still some small adjustments left to do. And that is most notably making sure that everything is square and parallel. Uh, and that will be done after the stepper motors are hooked up and the controller is running so I can jog all the axes. And also tensioning the lead screws because this machine contains something called a tingle tension system. So basically a guy with tingle as a last name figured out how to tension these screws so they don't whip around as much under high RPM. Uh, but like I said, before I do that I need to have the controller hooked up and all the motors running properly. And I noticed a small problem that I'm gonna fix. All of the motor wires are tinned. And we don't want that. That's actually quite a common failure point for electronics. Because if we have a situation where we have a short circuit or just too high amperage running through these cables, the tin actually melts and might cause two of these cables to actually short circuit or even cause a fire. So I'm going to remove the tinned ends and then install the connectors for all the motors. So, the final thing I will show you this week is how I assemble the cable drag chain. Now, as you can see, there is an instruction on how to fit the drag chain onto the machine, but there is one big problem. This is the original Work Bee. That is a Queen Bee Pro, and they're not exactly the same as you can see. This X axis plate is different, the Y axis plates are different, and I simply can't fit the chain the way they show in these instructions and to be fair they uh, yeah the instructions aren't that great to begin with so I will have to play it a bit by ear and uh, yeah we'll see how it goes one of the things I realize I have to do straight away is to fit some sort of a block here or shim block so I can fit the drag chain straight across the uh, the 4060 profile. And instead of assembling the y-axis chain on the outside here, I think I'm gonna try to assemble it inside the envelope of the machine here. That should keep all the cables neatly out of the way. In the video where I upgraded my table saw, I mentioned that you should never throw anything away, and this piece is actually a prime example of that. This piece is actually left over from, let's call it version 1 of my 3D printer. This was part of the GT2 timing belt tensioning assembly for the Y-axis. And it's been sitting in a box for 
close to three years now. And now I found a use for it because it's actually like the perfect width to attach the drag chain to. And as you can see, I just did it quick and dirty. This was the only extra piece I needed. And uh, let's see where I left them. These were all the fasteners and all the attachment hardware for the cables. And I didn't use any of them. So I used this aluminium bracket. Uh, nut and bolt there. Screws and T-nuts here. Screws and T-nuts here. And screws and T-nuts here. And I can't see it not working. So we'll see when I get fired up and get everything moving. But I think it should be fine. That's it for this week. It's actually gone by a lot quicker than I thought to get to this point. All in all, I spent around two days in the mechanical build. If I don't count building the table. And that's kind of why I named that part part zero of this video series. Because it's not actually building a router, it's building a table. Anyway, if you want to check it out, here's a link. And like I mentioned in my last video, you can actually find me on Instagram as well. If you want more regular updates on this build and maybe some other stuff. In the future, we'll see how it goes. And in the meantime, if you like what you see, please let me know. Leave a comment, send me an email, subscribe if you want to. I won't force anyone. That's kind of hard to do, actually. So anyway, in the next episode, it's time for electronics. And I will both lay out the electrical cabinet. I will route all the cables for the motors and the, and the end stop switches and everything. And I'll also have a discussion with you about the term integrated safety and how an analog safety system or an electrical safety system should be set up. Because that's actually kind of what I work with and do for a living. And I see a lot of mistakes done by makers and hobbyists on this point. So we'll have a discussion about that in the next video. And until then, watch some of my other videos. Take care and till next time.